Is my sound good? Yeah, sound is good, bro. <laughs> that Benga, you're that directing. Oh yeah, okay. Daniel, you're doing sound. Oh yeah. Uh, so what should we do, Benga? First, we should look at this place. Okay, you look at the wife. Introduce yourself. Then. Do I need to? Is, is okay. this not? No, you can hold it now. Okay. Wow, look at us, cameramen. Later, I'll be shouting on people to sit down. Still. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Benga, let's, let's something. Do. Oh yeah. Um, action. Hi everyone. Um, welcome to the studios. Yeah. So we have uh, with us here. We have. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi everyone. Um, welcome to our studios, and we have with us a uh, uh, very own uh, international producer, award-winning international producer, uh, Emma, Mrs. Emma Edosio. Hi, Mrs. Emma Edosio. Hi. Okay. Uh, Ma, I would want you to tell us about yourself quickly, just for the viewers. No, that's not a hard-hitting question. Tell me, ask me another one. No, I They know me. Don't no, no, cut! No, they know me, part of it! Director, it was director. They know me, part of it! It was director. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut. Oh, yeah, continue. Okay. Um, pick up. <clears throat> wow. So, I uh, want you to tell us, um, uh, what are the most uh, important qualities of a director? The most important quality of a direct quality of a director. Yeah. Um, I think curiosity. You have to be curious about the world to be able to tell stories. You have to be very curious about people's character, about you know the limit at which people can go. Um, you have to be curious. You have to be able to expose yourself to stories. Um, stories come to you. So you have curiosity is like the major major characteristics of a director. Characteristic, I would say, of a director. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. Um, what are the major challenges you faced as, as a film director? What kind of... These are... We are going to, said, okay. uh, want to... Want to warm it up. Start with the heart hitting one. Okay. Like major challenges. What are the major challenges? I think, I think one of the major challenges as a director is access to funding. For every Nigerian director, is how do I get money to make my next film? I have this great idea. How do I get money to make, make my next film? And that's one of the major challenges that I face. Okay. Um, we have this one. Uh, Says, is it advisable to focus solely as a filmmaker, or should I have side authors, knowing that um, I have to train myself as a filmmaker, and I, and I also have to exist, I also have to mm. have uh, my life to live, I also mm. have to earn income. Mm. So what would you advise? We know I have to train myself well to be a very good director, mm. and in this country where things are not uh, as mm. sweet as it is. Mm. So what do you advise I do? Should I focus or I think spread? that... Um, you should have a side hustle, but it, it shouldn't be too far from filmmaking. Um, filmmaking is very jealous. And um, I'll give you an instance. Before I became a director, I used to do wedding videos. And I used to do, um, I, make, I made corporate documentaries. I make, do, I make documentaries. And you know, um, even while I was pursuing the fact that I wanted to become a filmmaker, I was doing side hustles that enabled me to practice and practice and practice. Like weddings did a lot for me. They taught me how to be stable with the camera. So even while you're chasing your side hustles, let it be, to, let it be as close as possible to filmmaking because you want to constantly keep practicing to build your skills. Um, to become a director, to become a great director, you have to keep creating and you have to keep practicing. And you find out that when you go to other parts of business, it really takes you away from the craft of filmmaking. So let it be within the film ecosystem, our advice, so that you can keep practicing and keep watching people in that space and keep getting inspired. Okay, so to, to bring it to my personal um, reasoning now, I, I have this um, uncle who's really worried about my finances. And then he would say, okay, how about you going to the tech business? Mm -hmm. People are making it in the tech business. Uh, you're a filmmaker, the, the journey seems long, and it's going to be longer even if you don't have something to sustain yourself. Mm. So what would you advise I do? I think that you should start um, creating, or let me be practical, I always use myself as an example. Um, I was in the same shoe where my parents were very worried about me, my family was very worried about me. But when I started, I started having small, small things that I was doing, so they saw me actively working, so it wasn't, it wasn't like I was totally broke. So while I was working with Clarence Peters, I was doing weddings. I was shooting weddings. And then while I was doing other things, I was making documentaries. I was always putting work out there. And people were always calling out to me, hey, Emma, come and do this small, small project. And with that, I was able to survive. Do you understand? And build my skills. So it came to a point where 
I started getting documentaries, more documentaries and wedding videos. You know, um, I didn't need to do wedding videos to survive. Do you understand? So as if you are young and you're starting out, start producing work and start taking your work out there to the small shop owner. Oh, I make this video. Do you want to do, do you want to? And you find out that your skills get better. You earn some money, you buy better equipment and you start growing. Or another thing you can do is to look, in this industry, the currency of this industry is skills. Align yourself with a production company that can teach you the skills you need. Because once you have that skills and you're growing with that company, you, the, the sky's your limit. Do you understand? But the most important thing that you should focus on is building skills and putting work out there that people can see, that they can call you back to do it. And I'll, I'll always use myself as an example. I started doing weddings, then I did corporate documentaries, then I did, I went into filmmaking. And then even right now, I still make documentaries, but filmmaking is, you know, picking up and documentary is sustaining me. It will come to a point where I would be fully grounded as a filmmaker, making, earning a living from it. But always have something within that ecosystem that is sustaining you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I have this two way question. Mm -hmm. um, you, you get to a stage where, OK, you're no, you're no longer an amateur and you're not also a professional. Mm. And at that stage, you, people want to work with you. Mm. But there's, there are two limiting factors that, mm. I, that I know of. Um, one, they ask, um, can I see some of your work? Mm. Some of your works. And at that stage, you don't have, you, don't have, you might have the skill in your head, mm. or you've not just had the avenue to execute so many projects you've had to plan. Mm. That's one. Two is um, a negotiation, pricing. Mm. Uh, you, when you give them a price that you feel will fit into the budget of what they want. Mm. You feel, okay, you're too young to get this kind of money. You're mm. too, uh, we don't think you're that professional enough to get this kind mm. of money. How do you think we should tackle it? Because it's, it's a major problem for, for young filmmakers out there. Mm. The truth is that you're too young to have that kind of money. Oh, wow. And I, I'm just being as honest as possible. Um, you're a product of what you shot. If you don't have a portfolio, you're not in the craft of filmmaking. I, and I'm, I'm being really s serious about it. If you don't have, it's just like saying to a, a client, Give me, it's just like saying to an agri, agri farmer, I'm a farmer, okay, so what have you planted? Oh, I, don't, I haven't planted, but I'm, I'm, a great, I'm a great farmer. You won't give that farmer his money. And if he tells you, oh, I need to produce, um, you know, I have 20,000, I have potential of getting 20,000 hectares of land, give me 50 billion naira, you look at him like he's absolutely not. Do you understand? So the, 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 the point as a filmmaker is to keep creating. And in the process of creating, you build a strong portfolio. You practice, 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 practice. And you push yourself and you begin to build a strong portfolio that you can now go out to people to say, hey, I'm worth my onions. This is what I've created. And it's based on what the value that you want. I can give you the value and this is it. And then you start getting jobs from there. But if you do not have that, if you do not, I'll, I'll give you an instance. When I was with Clarence Peters, I knew that I, when, even before I met Clarence Peters, I knew that I always wanted to do music videos. So I'll take a camcorder, my friend, Collide. I worked in this small production company and I would shoot, he was a big fan of Mode 9, and would shoot with the camcorder. And it was the dumbest of all. But you know, I saw it and it kept pushing me to become better because I had Clarence Peters as my goal, you understand? So I kept getting better, I kept pushing myself. And with the, you know, with the small, small work I was in, I would say, hey, do you want this, do you see this? And someone would say, okay, I think you can do this. Take this small one. And then I, I would do it and do it so, I would, you know, keep pushing myself until I started getting portfolio. And the truth of the matter is that you attract the clients, you know, you get to a point where the tri clients will start chasing you for work. But if you don't have a portfolio, you can't be a dreamer and say, I'm the biggest thing since sliced bread. And you have nothing to show for it. It doesn't work that way in the film industry. Your currency is, your portfolio, what can you do, really? And we have a lot of people who just talk, 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 but don't create. And, you know, you, you end up not, not earning if you continue like that. Okay. Um, do, you, do you feel there's a gender imbalance in, in, in filmmaking? Uh, I, I wouldn't say um, all over, but let's use Nigeria as, as a case sample. Do you think there's, do you think there's a gender imbalance? And if there is, um, how, how do you think you can be tackled? What do you is. mean by gender imbalance? Uh, okay, maybe um, the male are giving more respect to, to, or more access, or more funding, or mm. more, more whatever than, than the female, or the female are more treated 
uh, treated more fairly than the male or something like I that? I don't think so. I think we're in a, an amazing time in the... I, I, I talk as a director. Okay. In, the, in, in, in Nigeria, if you look at a lot of the people that I respect as filmmakers are women. Uh, Moabudu, who gave me great opportunities that I'm like forever grateful to her. Um, you talk about Tokpa Oshii, who supported me when I started. Uh, you talk about Jade Oshuberu, who is a fantastic filmmaker. You talk about Kemi Adetigba. A lot of women are doing great things in, the in, 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 in Nigeria. And I think that when, when it, an era where if you produce, you get people to you, you get the jobs that you want. Do you understand? So um, I, I honestly don't think there's an, there's an imbalance. I think there's a, there's a lot of work as a female in the industry. It's a lot of a lot of lot of work, lot of work, and you know I, I totally understand if a lot of women are like, I'm not for this life. I'm a baby girl life. You know when you are screaming and shouting at everybody, you are thinking of where money will come from. You know somebody has run away with your money. Somebody has run away with your laptop. Somebody are chasing somebody for hard drive. Your mates are giving birth. You know living baby girl life. You you've not bought with one in a in a long time. Why do you think I have dreadlocks? You understand? <laughs> So I don't think, I think that we're in a great time where there's access right now. If you make a great work, it's easy for your work to travel, like Kasala traveled. Um, and there are great women doing amazing things. I think it's, it's open for both men and women. It's just that are you ready to do the work? It's hard, intense work. Are you ready? Are you ready to say, I have a dream. I want to make a film. I need two million naira. Are you ready to go and find that money when no one believes in you, nobody? Are you ready to say, oh, I want to be as good as the, my American film directors and you have only a Canon 60D with a um, Canon 51.8mm lens and you have that dream? Are you ready to push yourself to slay, to practice, to fail, to fail, to fail, to fail, to fail? Are you ready for that work? And Nigeria is not a, the Nigerian film industry space is not a, it's not for the faint hearted. So I think that anybody who is strong, determined, focused can actually make it, man or woman. Mm. Great. Do you have any other questions? Oh, yeah. Oh, ask me questions. Okay. Um, Emma is on camera. I, I, I don't know if you asked, um, what are the mistakes young filmmakers do and then what would you advise them? I'm not asking. Mean, okay, let's, let's just take that. Okay. Okay. What are the young, the mistakes young filmmakers do? do? Um, what would you advise them not to? I think one of the greatest okay. mistakes. Let me, so let me just ask the question so people get to hear and then. All these mistakes are going to be there. So yeah, yeah. So we'll cut. that's what yeah. makes. Don't cut them. All of them are going to be there. All these ones are going to be there. Okay. Easy. All right. Um, of it. All right, so we are <laughs> recording. <laughs> We're still being recording. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's uh, wrong pick with up and action. <laughs> okay, as as a filmmaker, what are the mistakes? As a young filmmaker, what mm. what are the mistakes? Sorry. I'm young. It's okay. It's okay. As a filmmaker. It's okay. <laughs> as a filmmaker. It's okay. Leave it there. I'm still young. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you're asking like that. <laughs> okay, as a uh, man. <laughs> I, I, I stop. <laughs> it's tough. I'm not that old, okay. Okay, as uh, as, hey. as a lady. As a young filmmaker, hey, as she wants me you. to ask it, yes. what are the mistakes you see young people do and what would you advise them to do better? I think one of the things that the mistakes that young filmmakers do is the fact that they shoot one film and they fail in that film and they give up on filmmaking. They're like, you have an idea, it's what you see versus what you get. <laughs> You're like, I want to go and make, you know, I brought my life savings, 500k. Now I'm going to shoot this Martin Scorsese film. And they go on Lagos Island and Aguero slap them, collect their <laughs> camera. You understand? And all the money actors don't show up. Or they shoot and it's like, what you see versus what you get. And they give up hope and they're like, oh, I'm never going to do it. I, I think filmmaking is, is I, I, I will always say this, I'm a product of my failures. I'm a product of not giving up. Oh, there are some films that I've shot that I wish, you know, I, I cringe that they're going to come out. But... I didn't give up. Even when my film looked like crap, even when I was using the crappiest of equipment, I did not give up. And the truth of the matter is that from every failure, I kept learning and pushing myself to be better. So I failed in this moment. Okay, mm. okay. so the next time I know what I'll do. It's just always dusting yourself up and going for the next one. Forget perfectionism. Forget that you want to be beautiful. It's a process and it's a journey. 
and a lot it's a brutal journey and I, I said this because look a banker does his work and they give him accolades in the office you're a filmmaker you release your film to the world he said like, what nonsense did you shoot you know it stabs at your heart you know what did you shoot sell or there you can't even shoot anything you know and they're like i like your film <laughs> you understand I get your thing? You, you're releasing it to a brutal world and you don't know what people would say about your work but the thing truth of the matter is that just dust it off. Have a vision of where you're going to and constantly keep creating. You fall down, get up. You fall down again, get up. You fall down again, you get up. Fall down again and get up. That film you want to shoot, go and meet somebody on the road. Madam, please, are you a tomato seller? Let me just shoot you. That thing you've been saying, keep practicing and practicing and it, it opens up. This world opens up to you. So one of the mistakes is that people give up. Give up after one, two films. It's a journey. It's a journey of tears and joy, but it's so rewarding. And the more you continue, the more you get better. Yeah. Okay, so I would, I would want us to round off it. Um, Which round off? Something. You people do never ask me why am I why am I hard at all? You people, all those questions. Ah, uh -huh. why do you think is Emma talking to her? her, her? Okay. I, I, you guys know that I'm very hard on you. Yeah. I mean, you I'm know that I don't smile. I can be very playful, but I, you guys are the. I'm really hard on you guys. And one of the reasons that I'm really hard on you guys is because, first thing first, I think my, my major work, my, 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 I'm, and I want to have excel, excellence, I want to be excellent in everything I do. And I expect that from you guys. And I always say to you guys that the world is tough on men. And if you do not get your act together here, time is running out. And if you do not get the skills you need to survive in this brutal world, the world will be very, very hard on you guys. And that's why I, ha you know, I really, I really push you guys. I really, really push you guys to, to be the best. We are so grateful for the push. Yeah, right. Yeah, then you're so not going to break my lens. Oh, yeah. Next question, John. Don't be watching me. Okay. Go and break my lens and my, and my, <laughs> you lost my microphone. The question behind, the behind the camera. Behind the camera. From Winger, <laughs> from Winger himself. Yes. Okay. So, about the documentary, Why are you pitching to me a documentary on camera? Like, Please ask me questions. I'm going to pitch anything to me. Don't uh, pitch. Uh, don't don't pitch, pitch anything. Don't you want people to know what we are uh, what we want to do. On camera. No, no, no. How to go about it? You don't know this video is supposed to be two minutes. Oh. Because we decided to do video today. I'll be at the because I decided to come on okay. camera. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I think I, I want to ask um, a more psychological question. Okay, psychological. Yeah. yeah. Um, so many young filmmakers don't have the cash to go out there. Yeah. But I, there are ways I think people can. There are ways you can sort for these things even without having money. Mm. So uh, what 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 ideas do you think? What what ways do you think we can psych people up to get this uh, projects done? We don't have the money, and we don't have. Maybe they don't have the connection what's as the, well. What's on your leg there? My phone. What kind of phone is that? iPhone. Uh -huh. What do, does he have? Camera. Yes. Does he have sound? Yes. What are you doing with your life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, yeah, continue. Ask the question. <laughs> Have you not seen Ikorodu boys? What are they using to shoot? That they are getting global prominence. Ikorodu boys. What did they Did they use? Did they have money? The, the annoying thing is that you're so, you, you guys can be so proud. Yeah. You want, I want, you know, I want to have like a red. I want to have like, I want to do. So, oh, no, no. In, in defense of some people, uh, some people like myself, uh, uh, the proud gang. No, not. Uh, we are so humble to the, mm. to the ground. Mm. So what I'm actually saying is, okay, for example, you want to make Daniel Schiffer's um, videos, like um, he's a vlogger, he does um, like restaurant shoots, uh, let's say he wants to recreate a pizza, because at the point you want to tend, as you said, um, your, your product is what people would buy. Mm. It, it's what people have seen you do mm. that they would want to pay you to do. Mm. So if, I, if I'm targeting a commercial um, business line, mm. I have to do some to the commercials mm. and I have to make it look nice. Mm. So if, if I want to recreate someone's um, video that I think it would help sell me well mm. and I need something that, that would at least give me that quality, how, mm. how do I go about it? Okay, the, the thing is that you want to create a video mm -hmm. uh, and i'll go back to Ikaru du Bois, right you there's you you would always find a small shop owner who you can do something for free 
and then you take your phone there and you practice. Okay. And you feel, but she'll be so excited that you've done something for her that she can put online. Do you understand what I mean? And she will tell all her friends like her, and then she probably will give you small money, and you save up that money. But you do like six, but you're still watching the video that you want to be to do, and you keep getting better with every video until you've saved up enough to buy a 50mm lens. You do not ha need the best of the best equipment to create quality right now as we speak. You don't need it. You do not need that. So your name keeps going around that, oh, um, Adedoi is the guy to go. If you don't have money, he'll do you a favor, he'll do you a great job. And you know his work is even a lot, you can, they can see that you're putting an effort in it. And as you keep going, you keep repeating and repeating. I mean, there's something that they said, like um, you, you get better with doing things a, th a thousand times. Thanks, yeah. yeah. And when you keep doing that, you see that you get better. You, you're no longer afraid of that. And you get better. And people start knowing you. And you know your name, people start recommending you. And then you're investing back in your equipment. And you're getting better, and you're getting better until you finally get to that Daniel, whoever, or that food blogger. Okay. It's a process. So what people do is that they start from the top. They want to start being Daniel with nothing, and you know they expect their work to be the best. So they borrow without the skills, without even practicing. They borrow and they invest so much into equipment, and they keep failing, and they don't understand why. Just what I mean. So if you have the money to invest, fine, but just know that it's a journey to get to that point. And that journey, you learn and you build and you build. You can't just watch one YouTube video and start and say, okay, I'm the best, I'm the done. You build that journey and you build that journey and you're putting work out there and people start calling you for nothing. Okay, so, um, okay one more question. Um, this, is w this is above um, amateur level. Uh, mm -hmm. I hear people say, people even at the top positions of this business, like they say something like, it's not about, it's about the camera, it's not about, um, it's, they say something, it's, it's about the gadgets. And some people say it's not about the gadgets. Mm. They say something like, okay, it's about what you can do with the available gadget. Some mm. people say it's about what the available gadget can get you to do. Mm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Mm. What, 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 what line would you pick? What line would you? So far, I've, I, I can I think I can answer that question yeah, already. Yeah. But um, d would you say it is wrong for people to say that um, it is really about the gadgets you have? See, like I, I don't I, I don't want to be in that that director who sits on a high horse to tell people what to do. I, I, and I keep saying this, I can only say based on what my experience is. And I don't want to be that director where it's Emma versus Nollywood or Emma versus the world. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity that I have. Right? And so far, I've been blessed to know that it's not about your gear. And this is my experience. I'll give you an instance. My movie, Casala, got onto Netflix. I used a 250,000 Naira camera to shoot that film. And it got on Netflix with films that was there, films that were with budgets of almost millions of Naira, just millions of dollars. So my film was there. So. You can, whatever floats your boat, but for me, uh, my message to a lot of people is that you can have nothing and still create something. You can have nothing and still be the best. You can have nothing and still create quality. Some people can ha have access to the big cameras, have access to that, and it helps. It, you know, having the big camera helps. Having a fantastic team helps. Do you know if, what, if I had a cinematographer on Casala, my life would have been so easy. If I had a red, it would have been so beautiful. If I had that access, you know, it makes your work easy. You understand? But my message to people out there is that you can use what you have to create and it doesn't have to be perfect and not a lot of us have access to that world not a lot of us have the time to wait for 20 years to create a first film use what you have to start and as you grow and the journey comes more money will come and you produce like my next film now was made with like a lot more than Kasala, and i'm really grateful for that opportunity but it started with me using what i had you understand it, whatever floats your boat but my message is that you can make something great with what oh you yeah. have and there are a lot of young nigerians you see the industry is really hard on more nollywood now trench trenches abby what's that song again <laughs> trench trench trenches yeah eh? no no me no me no, no, no. <laughs> Your mini no trenches. Take me, your, of, take me out of trenches. Your me, your me, your me, your me, new trenches. Yeah, exactly. Nollywood is your me, <laughs> <new> trenches. <laughs> There's so many young people that yeah. are praying. So many young people. 
that it's like really hopeless, you know, really, really hopeless for them. And, you know, if I can be just that beacon of, of hope to say, and, you know, somebody really inspired me this much. I, I, you know, Abba Makama is like a great inspiration. The Surreal 16 filmmakers are great inspirations to me, right? It's possible, and we are examples that it is possible yeah, in, in Nigeria, yeah. Okay, there's also this um, problem. Uh, I feel it's a problem, though. Mm. One of the one of the um, things that don't inspire Nigerians, because I, I know a lot of Nigerians, that young Nigerians, mm. that they would want to consider Nollywood as a very interesting um, a atmosphere, mm. but due to some things, some videos, some productions, and they oh, come mm. on, what is this we are watching? Let's just Let's just focus on Hollywood. Let's just focus mm. on Bollywood. Let's just focus on whatever hood it is mm. they have. Because there are so many productions here in Nigeria that... Uh, okay, I guess your question, Okay, though. the question is, the question <laughs> is, what would you advise the filmmakers? There are some... I don't want to put Nollywood in a bad light. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be careful. Mm -hmm. But there are some terrible... Your body career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm killing my career. Uh, because they would also fire me too. Because I, I've done... Terrible productions, mm. also terrible mm. short films that mm. you know, I would look at my channel, they're not doing it. But mm. so there are some bad productions here happening in Nigeria, mm. and then they keep doing it. Someone just wake up in the morning and wants to do something, and just try to do it, and then it shoots that you way. Know, at least the person making it. Are you making? Oh, yeah, sir. <laughs> it's bad. Where is your own? No, I'm. Uh, hey. Let's go back to the question. Uh, hey. Oh, yeah, what's the question? <laughs> the, the question is. I think there is need. Let, okay, let me suggest before I ask my question. Mm -hmm. I think there is need for us to regulate what we are producing. Okay, oh keep quiet, there, Joe. Regulate what? Have you? What are you treating that you are regulating? I have. I, keep I, okay. quiet, Joe. At least we have an industry. Do you know what? The, what was Nollywood built on? Aki Asaban, Aki and Popo. You would regulate what? Okay, shift. Ask okay. me next question, so we'll Joe. Come to the end of today's show. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Mm. Which list? <laughs> Make us on our way to Miami again. Which list? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Ask what? What else? Uh, ask me what else? Ah, I'm I'm ginger. I don't know what to ask again. That will not find me like this. I don't know. I'm on your camera. Ask me. Oh, <laughs> what do you want to hear? Yeah, my guys, say something. Help me out. Okay. They're thinking. Oh, you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, put your thinking. Oh yeah, this my thinking cap. Okay. I hope I've been able to conv convince you and not confuse you. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> but Without no, I honestly hope this has been helpful to you. Yeah. It, I hope it has been helpful it has, to you. It has. Okay. It has been helpful for me. So yeah, that's it. I, I'm, really, I'm really grateful to have you guys work with me. I'm really, really grateful. Yeah. I'm really... Sometimes you drive me crazy. All of you in this office. Sometimes you drive me nuts. Sometimes I want to kick you out of my office. Uh, out of my studio. But I'm really proud of your growth. I'm really, that, that, that I would say, I'm really proud of your growth. I did it, I'll fire you now. <laughs> Calm down. I'm really proud of, you, proud of your growth. And I know you're not like the first set I've trained. You're not the second set I've trained. You're not even the third set of people, young, young men that I have trained. Um, but I can say that if you are focused on building your skills, if you're focused on, you know, the craft, if you put your head here, there, into filmmaking, and you know, really, really be passionate about it. There's, there's so much opportunities. I, I, I kid you not. I mean, I'm a living example. And you guys know, you've been to my house. I'm not from me. My father is not a, a tedola. You know, it is possible for you to, to rise and become. Ta -da! Should we start? I, we put it. We Should put it here on purpose. Before, on purpose. So you would see that so no joke. See. It's no, not. It's not bent. It's not. It's not as if we are. We are trying to. It's, it's not thick life. It's not bent. It's, 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 it's not green screen. Green. See, 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 see. We are touching it. It's real. It's, it's not thick life. And it's possible. Look, the only difference between me and you guys is because is you don't know what I know. Once you know what I know, you can even know more than me and surpass me. So if you keep striving for knowledge, you can. The sky is your limit. So the only difference between me, Emma, now, and you, are they doing Benga Daniel, Benga Daniel, yeah. is, <laughs> <laughs> is that you don't know what I know. But if you strive, getting that note, get, continue, 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 push for it. It gets better. Push, practice, 
build your craft. Set your eyes on the goal. This one is where I'm like, I'm like, there's more. My Oscars is coming. Ah, uh, sure. Oscars, Oscars is, is coming. coming. This is just, you know, this is just confirmation. I'm, I'm a product. Yeah, product of grace, trusting right. God, and hard work. Check so out now. Yes. So thank you guys for thank joining you. today's show. Um, we'll bring you more, more, more details, more in-depth analysis on being a filmmaker uh, from our fourth year, our fifth year. That's in if I don't fire them, they used to break my lens. Mm -hmm. If I don't fire them before they, what have you spoiled now? Uh huh. They don't fire them. But I'm, it's I'm the innocent one here. I don't yeah, really break things. Whatever. Yeah, I don't really break things. <laughs> so it's Emma talking to her crew. assistant, her crew. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah so wonderful yeah. guys. Uh, our mentees. Yeah. Yeah. Mentees. That's weird. And like you, you're a mentor, so really. Like, your mentees. Did you hear, did you not call me young filmmaker? Uh, uh, yeah. No, me. <laughs> when? When? <laughs> cut, 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 c